Hello everyone and welcome back to another reading from the book of Proverbs. Today we are on chapter 16 as we go through the entire book of Proverbs this month of January. So without further ado, let's do this. We can make our own plans, but the Lord gives the right answer. People may be pure in their own eyes, but the Lord examines their motives. Commit your actions to the Lord and your plans will succeed. The Lord has made everything for his own purposes, even the wicked for a day of disaster. The Lord detests the proud. They will surely be punished. Unfailing love and faithfulness makes atonement for sin. By fearing the Lord, people avoid evil. When people's lives please the Lord, even their enemies are at peace with them. Better to have little with good, little with godliness than to be rich and dishonest. We can make our plans, but the Lord determines our steps. The king speaks with divine wisdom. He must never judge unfairly. The Lord demands accurate scales and balances. He sets the standards for fairness. A king detests wrongdoing, for his rule is built on justice. The king is pleased with words from righteous lips. He loved those, loves those who speak honestly. The anger of the king is a deadly threat. The wise will try to appease it. When the king smiles, there is life. His favor refreshes like a spring rain. How much better to get wisdom than gold and good judgment than silver. The path of the virtuous leads, leads away from sin, away from evil. Whoever follows that path is safe. Pride goes before destruction and haughtiness before a fall. Better to live humbly with the poor than to share plunder with the proud. Those who listen to instruction will prosper. Those who trust the Lord will be joyful. The wise are known for their understanding and pleasant words are persuasive. Discretion is a life-giving foundation to those who possess it, but discipline is wasted on fools. From a wise mind comes rich comes wise speech. The words of the wise are persuasive. Kind words are like honey, sweet to the soul and healthy for the body. There is a path before each person that seems right, but it ends in death. It is good for workers to have an appetite. An empty stomach drives them on. Scoundrels create trouble. Their words are a destructive blaze. A troublemaker plants seeds of strife. Gossip separates the best of friends. Violent people mislead their companions, leading them down a harmful path. With narrowed eyes, people plot evil. With a smirk, they plan their mischief. Gray hair is a crown of glory. It is gained by living a godly life. Better to be patient than powerful. Better to have self-control than to conquer a city. We may throw the dice, but the Lord determines how they fall. So, so many amazing rich things in this chapter. Um, I wanted to highlight some overarching things that were said in this chapter. And one of them, we see it in the last verse where it says, we may throw the dice, but the Lord determines how they fall. In verse nine, we can make our plans, but the Lord determines our steps. In verse one, we can make our own plans, but the Lord gives the right answer. This is a constant reminder that God isn't telling you to be mindless. He's telling you to check in with him. If you have a thought about something, a thought to do something, a thought of a way to do something, that's fine. Make your plans, but check back in with God because he is going to be the one that determines what is the actual right path for you, what the actual right path is that you should take when you're doing things. And even when you start working on something 
doing something like i said in verse 33 the lord determines how they fall how the dice fall like He's going to be the one that determines the outcome in the end. And so I would say, even if God is giving you a plan to do something that seems so different than the way that people typically do it in a certain industry, than a way that people at your job normally get the promotion, than a way that people normally enter into a relationship, follow the voice of God. And I have something fun just to share with that even, uh, you know, my for those of you who know my story know I met, got engaged and married to my husband in nine months. I'm so excited. This year we will be celebrating 10 years of blissful marriage, you guys. And that is just such a blessing. And um, what I was going to say was I moved around a lot prior to meeting my husband. God would tell me to move to one place and then another place and another place. Like he was moving around just building different things in me, training me in different ways connecting with connecting me in different things and you know sometimes i moved a little bit on my own not gonna lie but um god did move me around a lot for a season in my life and it was during the season of years that people are typically meeting the person they're going to marry and so uh people were like girl you need to sit down somewhere you're not gonna meet your husband if you're always moving around and i determined in my heart and i said you know what if God has a husband for me, he's going to have to meet me in between my moves. That's what it's going to have to be. And I met my husband within two weeks of me moving to one of the places that God had sent me. And it's like, that's just the way of God. The way of the world said, girl, you need to sit down somewhere. If I had determined after that last move, you know what? If I keep moving, I'm never going to meet my husband. Let me stay where I am. I would have missed meeting and marrying my husband not not just in general but also in an expeditious way so it's like we have to make sure that we are not only doing things based on what seems right what the world would say or what even well-meaning people at times would say should be the way that we do things we have to seek what is god saying and how is he saying that we should do this thing and so the other thing that I really want to highlight as well is uh, I'm looking for the verse here. Um, but anyways, uh, one of the things it was talking about is how gossip separates friendships. And so just again, reiterating something that we've seen in so many of the previous chapters, watch what you say watch what you say i feel like we are continuing to see a thread of how important it is to be mindful of the words that you use when you speak to people and obviously this is gossip is when you're saying things when you're not in front of that person and so even being mindful and using wisdom concerning what you say even when the person that may be the subject <laughs> of what's happening is not around god wants you to watch your words at all points in time, whether you're saying something directly to someone, whether you're talking concerning a situation where a person isn't there. One of the things my husband and I have gotten in a habit of doing is if we're involved or witness or whatever, a certain type of situation and we're like, whoa, what was that? That was crazy this person was doing. We make sure we say, you know what? Let's make sure that we pray for this person. Even right then in that moment, we will say, let's take a moment to pray for this person, for their wisdom, for their guidance, for whatever seemed to be awry <laughs> um, in that moment. Obviously, knowing God knows more about people's lives, situations, and things that are going on than we do. And so even not praying from a place of judgment, but praying from a place of genuinely wanting the best for that person wanting god's will for that person's life wanting god's wisdom to pour into that person's life and so even if you know whatever things may happen make sure you stop and you say you know what instead of gossiping about this person about this situation let me pray god how can i pray into what this is because gossip will separate friendships and and that's again not gossip isn't what you say in front of somebody it's the things you say behind people's back and then, you know, they find out later <laughs> what it is that happened or you even maybe because you've been talking ill will concerning this person, start treating them differently. Not even realizing it, your heart and your attitude changes towards this person and that could be what breaks the friendship apart. So make sure that you're not gossiping, make sure that you're watching your words and make sure that you're watching 
um, to hear or listening to hear the way and the will that God would have for you to do things. So yes, that is chapter 16. I'm so excited. We are officially like halfway through uh, the reading of the book of Proverbs for this month. And I just want to say you guys are awesome. Uh, I know sometimes we feel like, man, we don't have time to really read the word as much as we should. But for those of you who have been following along, look at this. Every day you've made time to read the word of God. And so that just goes to show if you make it a priority, it is possible. And so I want this month to not just be, well, majorly to be Proverbs pouring wisdom into your life, but I also want it to be you creating a pattern of reading the word of God every single day, because it is important. If you say you are a Christian, you say you are a believer, you have to be reading God's word. I heard some really staggering statistics. It's like, over 90% of the people that say that they're Christians don't even read the Bible. Mind blown. Where are you getting the information that you need to successfully live life as a Christian if you're not reading the Bible? And prayer is important and you need to be doing that every day as well. But the Bible helps you learn the character of God and understand who God is so that you know it is God that is saying things to you, not the enemy trying to plant thoughts as an angel of light deceiving you, pretending to be godly thoughts. So I'm hoping that this month is also just, again, creating a pattern for you as we continue to read the word. Um, my prayer is that you are just being flooded, overflowed with wisdom as we continue 2024 and that you will have all the wisdom, guidance, and godliness that you need to live out 2024 because you're starting off right with Proverbs. Um, if you're just joining in, you can go back, you can catch up. It's not too late to join in on the party. Uh, reading a book, a chapter of Proverbs every single day. We are going to read all 31 chapters this month of January. The videos are here every single day, same place, same time, 7 p.m. South Africa time, 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Get in where you fit in, whatever your time zone is. And as I always say, I say South Africa time because my husband and I moved to South Africa by faith. That is what God told us to do. And I'm excited. We are embarking now, starting on some very exciting God-led things. Um, as we are here, we sought wise counsel, as the Bible says in the book of Proverbs, uh, before we moved out here uh, before from our pastors, advisors, mentors concerning what we believe God told us to do. Make sure you're always seeking wise counsel um, from mentors and advisors when you're doing things. Um, and it's, it's, God is good. God is doing the things. It's definitely a very major faith journey. If you want to follow our faith journey, we do have a YouTube channel where we share all of our stories and adventures, the Jones Family Channel. I'll put a link in the description below so you can check that out if you would like. And yeah, thanks so much for joining me today. Join me tomorrow, same time, same place. And I'll see you there.